Welcome back to the Get Into The Bag podcast, season four. I go by Polo Show, and I'm with my guest today. Ni. Nee. A.K.A. Symphony, A.K.A. Third Verse. Yeah, yeah. A man by many names. Um, Yeah, we're just going to kick it, talk some hip-hop, talk some local hip-hop. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Thank you for coming again, man. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, I guess just starting, like, where where does Third Verse come from? The name? The name, yes. <laughs> Third verse comes from, is it comes from a few places, you know, three being the number of completeness. Mm. So we want to be a place that you can get everything from start to finish, whether it's production, recording, mixing, mastering, management, helping you with your rollout, anything like that. We want to be, a, we are a spot in the city that you could come to and we can help you with those things. Mm. So that was part of the third verse. Third verse being the one that was supposed to complete the track you know whatever the story of the first two verses the third verse was the conclusion where they take you in the direction that it was supposed to really be right so yeah. tie that in with killing the third verse in hip-hop you know the, the murder of the third verse so now at least with the tracks that come out the studio there will be a third verse on it regardless of how the track is structured mm. oh that makes sense that makes sense yeah, I'm definitely a fan of third verses. How do you feel about third verses dying in, in present times? I think it's so sad, bro. I can't lie. Everyone's going to say, well, attention span, like, as though they weren't programmed to yeah. shorten their attention span, <laughs> you know? I do feel like there was, there were a couple times, like, when you listen to, like, those older tracks, like, the, like I'm referencing, like, Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt, mm-hmm. there'd be a couple times where you hit a third verse, and I'm like, this song didn't need a third verse, you know? I don't yeah, know. I feel like... that feeling? Obviously, there were times, like, I feel like in the old, like, when in golden age hip-hop, three verses showed that you were a real MC. Like, you're going to put three verses on this. Right. But I feel like, did we drop it because MCs got lazier, or was it an evolution of the sound? I think you, I think we lost opportunity. You know, the beat should be banging that we should be able to listen for three verses. <laughs> yeah, like, the beat's banging. You know, like, like, what about one features? Verse. What about features? That's that was fair. just one-on-one, because whose track is it? Yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> you know? There was a time when it was, like, if it was your track, and I featured you, I would have to do a third verse. You'd have so to. you know it's my track. Who else whose track is it? So I know. Like today, I like to hear tracks from rappers like where there's I have, what comes to mind is like Drug Dealers Anonymous with like Pusha T and Jay-Z. And right. it's like we wanted to hear Pusha and Jay do kind of a back and forth. You know what I mean? It would have taken away from it would have looked like Push was just trying to top Jay-Z if he did a third verse. They went super hard. You yeah, know that's I mean? true. That's true, but that's a bit of a power balance in the artist that's dynamic true. as yeah. opposed to, you know, that's a who's helping who, you know? That's fair. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I guess it's just like, I think it's, I think it's two parts. I think it is MCs that get lazier, but it is the evolution of the sound. Because I do think, there, for me, there were just times where I'm listening to the song, I'm like, this song doesn't need to have a third verse, but this MC has it in their head that they need to put a third verse on the what song. What about the bars? What, yo, you can get you can get the <laughs> song across. What about the bars, bro? I mean, and you, and you know what it is? When I'm listening to Biggie... You mad at more bars? No, no. I feel, I feel like, <laughs> when I'm listening to, like, specific guys, I feel like I want to hear more verses. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed when, when it ends. I just enjoy jamming, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm that guy. I'll put a track on repeat. So if there's a third verse and you're still flowing and it's nice, well, I'm not mad. I'm so getting <laughs> like I'm not, I'm And good. like, arguably, arguably, how much did streaming affect the death of this third verse? A lot, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Because, yeah, people people want to listen to bubblegum stuff. Like, it's, not, it's not even just what that, bro. It's if you're getting paid per stream, it don't matter. Like, if that track is 240 or if it's oh, yeah, three minutes, that. right? There's that too. You're going to get more spins. You want them to repeat it, right? So it's not like it was just. I don't know, everyone wants to say, like, we, I don't know which thing came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Like, mm. everyone wants to say, like, oh, they started cutting the third verse because we weren't paying attention to the third verse. I'm like, is it that, or did they just give us tracks with two verses and we're like, oh, yeah, it's cool still, so I don't care. I see what you're saying. Again, I think, I think, it's, I think it's two parts. I think, yeah, that, it's good that you bring that up. The music industry has evolved to the point where it's like, you're not getting paid more for having a longer song. No. You get paid off the first 30 seconds they listen to it. So yeah, right. like the guy who has a 31 second song is getting, is making as much off the guy who has a four minute song if they get played the same amount of time. Yeah. So yeah. Before, if you bought my album, you bought my album, it doesn't matter how long the tracks are. Mm-hmm. 
you know? But I, I think even that evolution, I think that's where the third verse even came from. It's like, if you are selling music, you wanted the fans to feel like they're getting more value than they're paying for, right? So that's where I feel like that, I want you to feel like I wrote my ass off on this song. That's why I, so this track okay. that have four verses. Stan, there Eminem, are. Stan has four verses. But if we look at music over time, obviously it's just trended to shorter and shorter tracks. That is the thing too. You know, even hip hop with three verses was still like before, you know, if it was a jazz, a jazz track could go for seven, eight minutes. Yeah, fuck, well, that's, that's so <laughs> true, know? yeah. Even some of the classics, you know, they're still going to go on for six minutes. Motown still got six minute tracks, like full introductions. No, but they had like, they'll always have like the single version and like the, the like edited, extended. they'll have like an extended version, right? Like, because you know? they knew like people were like, yeah, for the super fans, they want to listen to seven <laughs> minutes of this song, but like you just want to hear the chorus a couple times as well. <laughs> So there's that you. balance. Um, so yeah, let me ask you this: what What are you doing? Like, so with the name Third Verse, and obviously your initiative as a as a studio and a management um, entity. Like, what are you doing to encourage or like, I guess, bring back Third Verses in hip hop? Oh man, <laughs> or music, I guess. Bro, I'm not trying to fight that battle. Yeah, <laughs> like, change everyone else's opinion. <laughs> We, we work as a recording studio, as a label, so I, I don't try to dictate the artist's art. Mm. If they want to come and put three verses down, cool. If they don't want to do it, fine. For our own projects, we might have some tracks with three verses. We'll make a few special, you know, Easter eggs for people. But, like, on the whole, like, we're not trying to fight the current. This is just my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's how to do it. You can either, yeah, you're either trying to, you're either trying to fight what the, the status quo is right now, or you can, you know, you can go along with it, but again, still you know. doing your own thing. Um, so yeah, uh, when we first met, we had a conversation, uh, kind of just talking about Afrobeat, and you said a really bold statement to me, you know, that we're gonna we're gonna dive into here. So Let's you said it. to me, hip hop is dead or dying. You said you think as, you said as it the died. global leader, as okay. the global global leader, as the global leader, yeah. For black people, right? Like for yeah, for the culture, sure. For the culture, Afrobeats is taking that spot or has yes. taken that spot. I can. What, yes. what are you saying? Has or is taking? Now I knew you were gonna bring this back up again, and even just <laughs> hearing you say it, I said, "Yeah, I double down on that." Damn. <laughs> I have to double down on that. It's uh, it's an experience where like music is an experience, mm. right? And I feel like hip hop became unrelatable for a lot of people as they grew up, like, it was almost like we saw the split from, like, conscious rap and hip-hop. You saw that disappear. You saw R&B and hip-hop even go in a, two different directions before, like, R&B and hip-hop were so close. You, you know, you see so many features between hip-hop artists, R&B mm. artists, and stuff like that. So now hip-hop's just kind of defined itself. <clears throat> like, it's like the reputation caught up to it, like the bad side of the reputation. And I feel like a lot of fans kind of dissociated for them from that. And I grew up here. I grew up in Calgary. Mm. Hip hop was our identity as a black male in the city. You right. know what I mean? And that's a lot of people's experience. But I was fortunate enough to go home and get exposed to being in Ghana, being in Trinidad, seeing what they, those cultures have to say, hearing their music. Mm -hmm. Right. And I feel like as you go home, you also see yourself as more than just what the Western world tells you a black man is. Mm. Right? right, and now with a more global world and people traveling, and like I'm Ghanaian, so we're going rep again as doing. We're attracting people back to Africa, right? And as people kind of find out who they are, they they're not just married to hip hop anymore. It's not just like I got to be this identity because like we're used to fighting, we're used to the struggle. We we honestly we embraced it. Right. You know what I mean? We had to. Hip hop was a massive part of that, but now it's like how many people are really rapping about stuff that's going to get you through your daily struggle. I mean, and I hear what you're saying. It definitely feels like if we're looking at what the machine is pushing out, like what the majors, because there's so much great music out there, but what was being put in front of us, like from the labels, it is the, I'm doing drugs all the time or I'm, I'm shooting my ops or whatever it is. That's become the majority. But I do feel like I, the art as a whole is still not like, you can still look and find the guys that are keeping it authentic. Of course. Um, my, my whole thing is, I just don't think, like, for me, as someone who wants to hear bars, like, I could give a fuck what the beat is doing. Like, someone who wants to hear rappers rap, I don't think Afrobeats will, at least as of right now, Afrobeats does not offer me that. Afrobeats 
the majority of it, I want to say a good 85%, if not more, is love songs and songs about celebrating. You know? Yeah, it's it's love and vibes and party. You and so, know. you know what I mean? So, how's that going to get you through but your day? I'm going to say, now we say Afrobeats, but really, I mean, you have Nigerians, you have Ghanaians, you have yeah. Kenyans, you have people from all over, right? The Congolese will be upset if I didn't shout them out. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. you have so many different Afrobeats, and I'll always say that I think Ghanaians, we're the best lyricists. Mm. You know? I really think Sarkozy. Sarkardia, he's the best lyricist, in my opinion. And he's like, what he does over Afrobeat tracks, would you say is comparable to, again, a Nas? No, Nas is a Nas is a hey, Again, Nas that's why when I threw man. Nas, I was like, that's the Nas side. is a god. But, but you know um, what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? But, but that's the, the honestly, honestly, and it's not even that it's necessarily he's going on Afrobeats. A lot of his beats are so kind of hip hop based, but it's, uh, he's pretty close, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. This is what I think will in terms happen. Of, in terms of pure lyricism and, like, cadence, flow. Like, and that's, honestly, the way it is right now, Afro beats, again, it started with Fela and all those vibes in the 70s, but Afro beats and it's the way it's evolving, moving forward, is taking from hip-hop. To me, Afro beats needs hip-hop to survive. I think we need the hip-hop lyricism. I agree. Yeah, exactly. I don't think vice versa is not now. the same. You see it coming, right? Even Burner Boy caught hate for saying that Afro beats is all vibes. Everyone's vexed at him, even though... It is it's all vibes. Par- partially true. It is <laughs> all know? vibes. It's like you're not gonna hear, you're not gonna hear a song like Tupac, Dear Mama by Burna Boy. No, not by Burna, bro. But... You know what I mean? But who? Like, you know, by an Afrobeat artist, because it's just like I... maybe they'll yeah. have to evolve to that point. But as of right now, let me let me say, Omar Lay's last album. Yeah, that was heat. Again, but he had a lot of love songs on there. He had a lot of love. Well, yeah, sure. Maybe he's been hurt, but like <laughs> I'm talking about, there were bars. There was yeah, there was, doing there was substance. Right. To his content. You know what I mean? Fireboy's albums have substance to them. Uh, I think it's Laughter Tears. Oh, I can't remember the last part. But that album, like, that album is so relatable for me. Right. You know, and the, yeah, I guess it's a love album still, but we still have that. Like, if we break down hip hop into its categories of what people are rapping about, we're still going to see the same three. I mean, like, I just feel like. <sighs> If we break down rap music to what people are rapping about, I would say love songs make about 25% of rap music. Yeah. But I then would say... Continue. <laughs> the, the street stuff probably makes a good 35% of it. I wouldn't say 50. <laughs> like, you, that's what you're thinking. You're like, ah, it's good. Up no. it, up it, up Again, it. because you're just looking at what is the machine pushing to us. I'm not just looking at the machine. Because me, my rappers are not the ones that are being promoted by the machine. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> that's, like, you know, <laughs> I'm not just looking at the machine. I'm saying that, okay, so we're talking about Kendrick's album earlier. Yeah. He tried to talk about something other than the streets and pe- but people it just, have mixed feelings. Yo, like, I, I just, don't want to talk about my feelings, Kendrick. <laughs> I just feel like if we're going to, like, yo, this, this is my opinion on that Kendrick album. It was great. It was great album. It was great music. It was a, it was a great artistic vision executed. But again, it sounds like bro knows, like, yo, I got the fans on lock. I'm dropping an album in four years and they want this album. I just got to put out uh, put together least, some music. He knows. He knows. You know? He can put anything out, people will buy it. But at least he still put a concept still behind like, it, a unique concept behind it, and express whatever is on his mind. Exactly. There are so many artists that will be pushed by the machine, that drop albums that all the don't time, get that, look. that have nothing behind them. And they know that my fans are going to buy this regardless. Mm. I don't even have to sound good. I don't even have to, you know, put effort into writing these bars. But people gonna buy it. I mean, so all right, this is are you saying right now with hip hop, more than fifty percent of what people are receiving is this this kind of stuff that you're talking about where it's like they've not put any content into this or it's just bubblegum stuff to recycling everything that they're hearing all the time. Okay, let's say who are some of the industry leaders in hip hop as of today? <sighs> Lil Baby, Lil Dirk. Dirk, yeah. Drake is still up there. Mm-hmm. Um, spotted. I'm not as like you know. I can't name all these New York drill cats, but like they're kind of in the conversation these days. They they really just cluster into one to me. Right, but like, <laughs> like, every, everyone you just mentioned, what are they talking about? I mean, Drake is talking about being in the streets, <laughs> but I, I see what you're saying. Like you know, you that's know, twenty five percent, bro. <laughs> Drake again, but again, like this is what they're this is what they're pushing though. Like, 
I don't know. Like, like I tell you, I listen to Griselda. I listen to like 38 Special. Like these are mm -hmm. underground New York guys who like, if, in the conversation of hip hop, these guys are uh, buzzing right now. You know what I mean? But the mainstream machine, like you go on Rap like, Caviar, it's gonna be all Lil Baby before it's any of these guys. Like Griselda's vibe to He's, me right now is like almost like a mid 2000s, like Jeezy type era. The energy that they bring. That's, that's what I enjoy. It is Griselda. definitely like a street energy, but it's like, it's still content. It's, you know it's, what I mean? No, it's great. No, like that's to me, that's a high compliment. Exactly. I, I respect Griselda a lot, right? But it's not it's not even anything that it's not. They're doing they're doing the thing and it's it's cool. Like you're supposed to put your heart into your music and put it out there. I respect that. But to come and say that hip hop is in a good state because there are few small labels right. that have broken away from the main. But you know, this and is... even the mainstream, even the main, mainstream. I'm talking to one of my white homies just now, telling him I'm coming to do this podcast, and you know, told him like, "Oh yeah, we're talking about hip hop versus Afrobeats." He's like, "Yeah, like, kind of drifted away from hip hop, you know." And hey, like, what is he listening to? Oh, bro, I, I didn't even ask. There was no follow-up <laughs> yeah, questions. I'm for just kind of drifted away. There's no follow-up. I've questions. definitely heard but that my, a couple times. But my, and I looked at him, and he's a homie. He's a homie. But I was also like, so, so hip hop is probably a phase for you. Mm -hmm. Hip hop's probably a phase, right? For a lot of people. And that's because it's not as relatable as people continue through life. And the stuff they're promoting, we'll, we'll agree on half? That's <laughs> 45%. Yep. 45% yep. of the stuff they're promoting is not content that we want to really associate with. That is true. You know, and, it's, it, and the sad thing is that it affects the artist in their lifestyles and their choices. In terms I, of, I like, truly believe that as well. I believe, like, yeah, life imitates art. You know what I mean? So these, you, know? you get lots of guys who they weren't about that life until their deal, and now they got to do this whole like, you know, mean all the time, right? Perks. Perks. You know what I mean? All that shit, and that's you know what I mean. <laughs> you you ever had people come to the studio on perks? Maybe I just didn't know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> bro, vexed me, bro. I was like, you're supposed to spit bars. You out here passing out on a couch. Yo, and that's one thing I would say is rapid drug use is like the number one killer of rap rap machine. I'm definitely, yeah. you definitely see that yeah. where they come in. They're like, yo, we got this. We're just going to go out and do some, you know what I mean? Whatever they did and they come back and it's like the energy is not the same anymore. There's that, <laughs> there's, like, there's there's that the but there's session. even getting to the studio. Yeah. Putting in the studio. time to your craft, you know, because so many people would just rap and go buy a bottle just want an image, but they don't actually want to come and put that time in the studio. I think the mainstream, what the machine is pushing is the garbage music. But I believe that give it in less than 10 years, 10 years is just a max number, but it probably even have in half that time. I think the standard record labels as we know right now will, or cause I've seen a, like a stat or something like 30% of the industry right now, like music that's doing numbers or whatever it is independent artists. You know, because we're getting to this era where people know, like, I don't need a label to give me X amount right. of money if I can just fund it myself, put it out on Distro Kid. You know what I mean? I agree. Do all that stuff. So I think all these labels that are doing all this, like, even though they're boutique small labels, will become the majority. You know what I mean? And that's what it's going to take for this less too. no content music to stop being put at the forefront. Because it's a spiraling, it's a whole thing, like, the music that's being championed is the no content music and anyone who wants to rap is looking at you know Lil Baby or I'm not saying it's no content, you know what I mean. Like you know what I mean? It's looking at these cats and it's like, oh, okay, this is how I get into the game, you know what I mean? I gotta get some face tats, like you know what I mean? This so that's literally what it is. Like this is the blueprint if I, I want to have win. the image and you know what I mean? I feel like it will take the guys who are making content music. Okay, to be but champions. these independent labels. They're, I believe they'll probably start leaning more towards fusion music, you know, different varieties of genres. Oh, yeah, of they're course. They're going to expand past hip-hop. Of course. Because they, they were able to exist outside of it, right? And I think just, uh, once again, with the globalization of the world, like hip-hop's, hip-hop will always exist. The flows, the, the contribution to music is really just starting. Mm. <clears throat> Before it was just hip-hop, but now you're going to see it in so many other genres and, like, it's really going to... 
So then hip hop will never cruder. die. Hip hop won't die. But in terms of being a global leader, like bro, I was at an Indian friend's wedding the other day. They're playing Bollywood vocals on Afro beats it's mixes. Right. I, I had to take a video. <laughs> I swear it out. I had to take a video. Yeah, inspired. <laughs> you know, like in terms of the global market, I, I, I don't think it's a question right now. Like, it's but I mean, like, yo, uh, trap music well, was well, trap music was a wave. You know what I mean? Trap music was, and if you, you know what I mean. But it's okay. like I feel like drill has occupied where what trap was. You know, but I, and but yeah. you know what I mean? When just think about when Migos first came out. Like, yeah. They went on tour with Drake. They were the biggest hip hop artists outside of Drake when they. But that was ten years ago. But you. But this is what I'm saying. <laughs> but then, this is what I'm saying. How do you know Afrobeats isn't a wave? Because all this survived through that time and now is hip hop. You're right. It, okay, and I could reason through this. The reason I don't think Afrobeats would just be a wave is because a Africa is just getting its credit. Right. We're just developing as its own continent in many different ways, right? Nigeria, two hundred million people. Am I wrong? Yep. Two hundred million. USA 300. I mean, it's one country, like, compared to the continent, like, the whole continent of Africa can sustain Afrobeats through its entire existence. Mm. That's an interesting thought. This is what I would say. I would say, like, hip hop will never die. There will always be a hip hop genre. Mm -hmm. Afrobeats will probably be neck and neck with it, but this, this is how I see it. Maybe it becomes a fusion and the best rapper in five years is an Afrobeats artist. In, you know what I mean? In the sense- That'd be crazy to see. In the sense that like, it's it's a guy who yeah. came up out of Africa. He That's his foundation, but he's in the conversation with J. Cole and Kendrick. Okay. So this year, I'd say the biggest hip hop track was All My Life. Yep. And the biggest Afrobeats track was Calm Down. Yep. I haven't looked at the numbers, but I bet, bet Calm Down probably got like five times more streams. Yeah, 100%. Yo, All My Life is not a good song. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, no, nah, it's like, it sounds like, sounds like Dirk needed a J. Cole feature and that's like, that's the song, like, I don't know, it just sounds like the, the <laughs> label put that shit together. It doesn't sound like a, let's, let's call one and let's make, let's put something off the street. Anyways, that's, that's me. I know people I like this so. song. I mean, it's made for the kids. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, but, it, it sounds like a fun, it sounds like you can play that song at church, you know? Yeah, why not, man? Yeah, that's, it's and that's Sunday tomorrow, let's, let's go. That's what it is. But I feel like. Now, like, hip-hop still hasn't gone number one as far as a single this year. They have, this, this is the first year in, I think it's over 20 years, where we haven't had a number one song on the Billboard Top 100 for hip-hop wow. this year, you know? So there's no doubt about it. Like, yeah, I can see Afrobeats is, and, you know, Rema's killing that shit. But I think it's, yeah, I think it's just a matter of, I guess I, we're talking in circles here, but I, but I feel like it's just a matter of, I guess I'm just so I just love hip hop so much. I don't want to see it die. You know yeah, what I mean? I love hip hop too. Bro. I think it just needs whatever, whatever but it we needs. Still gotta to take be it to the critical. <laughs> I am being critical, and my opposite. What I'm seeing, I just again as a music fan. So let me move my observations aside. Just as a fan of music, like what I like, I know I will never stop listening to rap music. Yeah, you know, and whether that becomes Nas rapping over Afrobeat tracks, like. Rap is not dead to me if that's what the case is, but like I just feel like what it would turn into most to me, it just like I what you're saying to me with it's gonna become the dominant genre for black people around the world is like we're not gonna be we're not gonna care about what's going on with hip hop. No, you know no, I mean? I'm not it's saying not, that. The hip hop will hip hop will be there. Yeah. And we need it. Like we need still, it. <laughs> I need it's it. Still <laughs> a story, it's still a way of documenting our experience, right? But in terms of the global market, in terms of the marketability of a product, I think Afrobeats goes further. I think it just has to blend. I think what Afrobeats lacks in content or, or lyrical dexterity is what hip hop lacks in <sighs> global appeal right now. Okay, but what if, what if we don't want hip hop as a global leader? What if hip hop was better when it was a subgenre, when it was not a global leader? What do you mean, what if, what, how, what do you mean it would be better? How, if it's not the global leader, because people, because you're talking about the machine that's pushing all this mainstream stuff, right? Right. Hip hop's too divisive. Right. By nature, right? It's supposed to make people think about your environment, right? Right. How many people listen to tracks 
conscious tracks and they're like, oh yeah, I really resonate with this message. Or if we actually moved in the sense, it would actually be, people don't want that. Mm -hmm. So hip hop's going to divide people. And then you talk about like culturally, we're, we're always going to claim hip hop is our music. Right. Right. So then now we have white people, Asian people, they want to come and enjoy hip hop. You could enjoy, but not the same way we can enjoy now. Mm -hmm. So how's that going to appeal to them in that sense? Right. You know, so at some point, that's why I feel like, oh, well, maybe for a lot of these people, hip hop's just going to be a phase. I didn't want to believe it when I was in junior high and you guys are rapping every bar with me. Mm. But now, you know, so hip, and like, I mean it though, like maybe some things are better not being at the top. Maybe the art that would be produced from hip hop would be better if it didn't have the limelight on it. Mm. If we didn't have to promote to all these different markets, if we didn't have to do that. If we could just tell our stories and be cool. It's just the nature of the rap game, you know, like, you don't just want to rap second best. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I ain't saying second best, bro. I'm just saying from where their heart comes from, no, like the I, intention of what you're actually putting out. I feel like people want content, but it's just not like, so that's where I do agree with you. Like hip hop has lost its way of delivering good content because the majority is not content. I feel like there's a, there's a blueprint, you know what I mean? For making songs these days, you know, 808 be I'm going to talk about this shorty and this shorty. I'm yeah. talking about last night. I'm going to talk about Fergus. You know what I mean? Like, if you There's can cover formula. these things, yeah, exactly. You got a formula. You got a you got this track, type of track, right? And like, I just got it promoted in the right lanes, and <laughs> there you go. And that's where it's at. But yeah, I think it's just, I think the lyricists need to take elements of Afrobeats or elements from what the mumble rappers are doing to make yeah. the content shit hot again. Because ultimately, that's that's what I'm arguing for here is that content will still be the champion. Maybe hip hop dies and Afrobeat just has a subgenre, Afrobeat hip hop. And then those are the champions. Those are the guys we're talking about that are the J. Cole, yeah. Drake and Kendrick. I'll be okay with that. But I like for me, as of right now, if I if I go to an Afrobeats playlist, I'm going to, I would say, if it has a hundred tracks, 10 tracks are not about celebration or female. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it is right now. Where it's like, go to hip hop to this. Again, if you, <laughs> if street shit is half of it, the other half of it, they'll still be like, the other 25% of it will be the chick stuff. And then, you know what I mean? You'll still like, and that's what I love about hip hop more than anything else, or rap specifically, is in every genre of music, there are the topics that you will gravitate to the most. Like, Taylor Swift is going to rap about love songs. Like, whoever the jazz guys is, is going to rap about some more big blues music. But, the artist is gonna talk about whatever he's feeling today, and it's not always gonna be a love song. Yeah, you know what I mean, like with the rapper. I mean, and so of course, that's what that's what Afrobeats needs for it to fucking take over. Like, I I agree I, with I, that. I agree with that. Let's ask let's ask the audience though. <laughs> you know, uh, we want to know your top three albums of 2023, hip hop and and Afrobeats. Yeah. Because I'm honestly struggling with hip hop albums this year. This that's, year in specific. That's kind of sad. I mean, yeah, I'm on, I'm on, the, I'm in the same page. But again, I'm not pushing the good guys. But anyways, you know? like that's that is what it is. Um, so I know you have an album coming out. Um, you've played me a little bit of it, and you are playing around with kind of a, a fusion of hip hop and Afro beats. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. You want to tell me more about that? For sure. This is a good time to shout out my team. We got Chef Beats, K the Chosen. And Muiwa, so we're a team of four. Uh, Chef is a crazy producer, engineer, K the Chosen. I know a lot of you guys know him around the city, your friendly neighborhood rapper. And then my other guy, he's a money man, the accountant, you know, making sure that we keep things in track. So we've been producing an album, a collab project for the city. Uh, we have about 14 artists on it. They're all black artists from the city, bringing them back to Afro beats, but using their own style. So whether you're an R&B singer, you, you could sing. If you're a rapper, you could rap. If you're Afro beats artist, just cool. Mm. We're there for you. So yeah, the album's coming out. It's coming along quite nicely. I can't wait to release it. We have a single coming October 27th with uh, K Riz and The Blue. It's called Something Different. Bye. We have a single out with J.O. called Eternal Memory. And then we're hoping to release the album in early 2024. The album's called Life, Lost Yesterday, Found Eternity. Is there a comma in there? Well, 
it's it's life, you know. So like, yeah, it's kind of like lost yesterday, comma. We <laughs> <laughs> just said a lot of stuff. Can you say it again. <laughs> lost yesterday, found eternity. Light lost yesterday, found eternity. Yeah. So life with a Y. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Way to make that easy to find on Spotify. <laughs> it's just yeah, life. but I don't know. I I like yeah. I like meaningful titles like that because then I can, when I'm listening to music, I'm like. What is this type of message, right? Yeah, no, that's that's dope. Um, so yeah, I'm curious, what is the process for, or what was the process for creating this album? Um, because I would say majority of the artists that are on the album are hip hop artists, Mm -hmm. but you got them all on these Afrobeat tracks. Was it like the beat that came first, or was it? Yeah, so we found we knew the artists we were going to work with, the target, and we would honestly curate beats, go listen to their tracks, curate beats for them give it like some afro drums or whatever and then send it to them and to be honest i think chef went 10 for 11 in terms of producing tracks for these artists in terms they hear it and they're like yeah i like this like you know like oh, I take it as it is you didn't have to go back no remake no nothing he was just like so sharp with it that's fire so Very he impressive. would he knew the artists are we're trying to make a beat for this artist today yeah and, you know listen to some of their stuff and just craft so kind of yeah. beat style stuff there's some yeah. fire yeah no and that's and that's the process so what's what was the recording process like i mean everyone's recording process is different right some people would come with everything written some people would come in we right on the spot or you know people would be singing melodies and then you gotta fill it in in the words um <clears throat> yeah everyone's style is different but i think that's kind of the fun part about working with artists is seeing how their minds work and their personalities kind of shine through their art mm-hmm. in that sense so but yeah, all the recording sessions were fun. I, I enjoyed it. And we just kind of finished recording this week. And then into the mixing, mix it all at once. Then start releasing all of our singles, build content around it. Should be good. That's the name of the game these days. Um, I was going to ask you about ship hop. Um, oh, yeah. So I've seen that that's an event going on. If you just tell us more about that. Yeah, ship hops. Uh, this year, it's a quarterly event, so every three months. Our next one is November 1st. This is the last one for the year. Uh, it's hosted by K The Chosen. It's at the Ship and Anchor on 17th Ave. It is a free show, so there's no excuse not to come. Um, we have three headliners, three main acts. They get about 20-minute sets each. Oh, fuck. And then we have open micers, and we have a rap games portion where it will be this is kind of like case specialty, kind of getting people to freestyle on the spot, talk about a topic or mm-hmm. construct a story. So it's been a lot of fun seeing it grow this year. Was our This is our fifth show in November. So it's just nice being able to see it grow and naturally gain its own audience. And the lineup in November, depending on when this is dropped, I don't, I don't know if it'll be announced yet, but the lineup is going to be Sincere, Moto, and K-Riz. So I cannot wait for that show. Definitely come check it out. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a night. Word word. Pull up. Um, one more question for you, um, and I ask I ask everyone this: Is what is your top five in hip hop? Artists. Top five artists in hip hop. <laughs> top five. I guess top five rapper lists. Like who are those? You know, for me, it changes every day, if not every week. But um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna say these five, and it's gonna be re- in recorded history. <laughs> so, my top five rappers: Nas, Busta, Andre, Nas, Busta, Andre, uh, Kendrick. And who do I want to take for the last spot? Honestly, like, not just as a rapper, but for her whole body of work, but also as a rapper, I'm taking Lauren. Lauren. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, yeah. Miss Education is a classic. The Miss Education, she sings, she right. sings, but on the Fuji's projects, she's rapping. Yeah, right, right. I mean, and she's as a rapper. Yeah. She, come on, man. That's crazy. I mean, that, well, that's good that you have a female in there. <laughs> yeah, I, had to, I had to think about it. I was like, <laughs> where do I want to go with this number five? People could be mad that I don't put Jay in there. That's common criticism that I get back, but in terms of like, I was, I grew up in hip hop. I really thought the beef was real between Nas and Jay, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really mean, did. I mean, even so, I have them <laughs> both in my list. 
What about what do you think of Lil Wayne? Oh, Wayne's a Wayne's a great. He's, he's just not like, up there. It's not not gonna take a spot up to top five guys. Eh? Not in my personal and like the amount of times I bumped the Carter three, especially like you, you would think, but like, nah, I can't. I can't take. Who would you take off my list and put Wayne up? Say your list again. Okay, I said Nas, Busta, Andre Three Thousand, Kendrick, and Lauren Hill. Ah, uh, people hate me, but I probably I would probably take Kendrick out for the win. And yo, it's not any hate for it's not Kendrick. Hate. It's not. It's never hate. It's Kendrick's trying. And even like I seen Lupe Fiasco say this. Like he says, Lupe Fiasco's like, yo, he's a better lyricist than Kendrick. Like Kendrick's not good with the the punchlines and stuff. But what Kendrick is good at is putting together great albums and like <laughs> concepts and like you know Kendrick that's, is great at that. That's what he like, does. But I feel like I is feel so like crazy, on but... some punchline stuff. Or you know what I mean? Metaphors. Like, you don't get a lot of that from, from Kendrick. You know what I mean? L- L- Lupe. Lupe had a chance to be on this list. Oh, yeah. No. Until he dropped Razors? <laughs> yeah. Until he dropped Razors, bro? Lupe could have been on that list. Lasers was the, uh, the... He says the majors were like, look. I know. We've let you do what you want for a while and now. you're going to do... And that was his highest selling album, you know? I don't care, but... Yeah. <laughs> like, it was his worst album. <laughs> we all hate it, but like... That's the name of the game. You have to get the bag, you know. Oh, man, it's but, a it's a sad thing. But like, so like Lupe saying that about Kendrick, not many people could say that to Kendrick. And that's I feel like, and that's why I brought that up because I can see. Do you see where that's coming from? I feel like, and again, this is why everyone's top five list is going to be different. Like, what does what makes a great lyricist to someone is not what right. makes a great lyricist to someone. For me, punchlines, metaphors, syllables, like all right. that stuff is important. And I feel like. Punchlines and metaphors, Kendrick doesn't do a lot. That's fine. Or yeah. that's fair. For me, it's a story. The story. Yeah, well, that, that makes sense. Right. Why is J. Cole so, not on there then? J. Cole could have been, but you, we said rapper. Right. And J. Cole is a crazy rapper, but in terms of his rap ability, it's not the same. Like his storytelling's amazing. But as a pure like We're just delivery, reading them on the verses and the just like, like I'm gonna say it's a delivery. MCs. Like in terms of like Come on, I said Andre 3000. Yeah. I said Kendrick. Like, and that's the Kendrick versus J. Cole argument. But, like, in terms of rapper, if you ask me who my favorite artist is between them, J. Cole relates to me more. I'll take J. Cole. And you know what? That's probably where I'm coming from as well. Like, I don't even know, though. Like, I would give it, I would, if it was just on some rap shit, I think, I think I'd give it to Cole. Over Kendrick? I think so. To me, like, (sighs) you know a track? (sighs) Like, Rega Mortis was one of the ones. Yeah. But, J. Cole or Kendrick on Higher Power. On Higher Power. Yeah, yeah J. Cole's they, beat. Yeah. They in- exactly, you understand. And they interviewed J. Cole. Did anyone ever kill a track harder than you that you produced and he said Higher Power Kendrick? Yeah, no, J. J. Cole shouldn't have done that interview. <laughs> People always saying, bring this up. We can bring it up though, because like, <laughs> it's fair. And I would say that like J. Cole, like I love the way he moves through the industry. Yeah. Because on the albums, he's going to do exactly what he wants. He doesn't really care who likes it, whatever. But on his features, he's going to come show that he's the best in the game currently. And in terms of, like, if we said who who the best rappers are currently that's still rapping, I'll put J. Cole up there every yeah. time. Yeah. Every time. Especially for, like, his growth and development. Especially over probably the last, like, as a rapper over the last 10 years, but not... It, like his lyrical ability has improved yeah. so much over the last ten. You listen to early J Cole. It's the storytelling, it's the raw, it's the emotion, it's the passion, mm-hmm. right? But we, yeah, that, that's how I feel about Cole. In terms, like he's still my favorite artist, but it's just as a rapper, I can't say that Cole's going to out rap Busta. Nah, I just seen Busta live. No one's going to rap. No one's going to rap. Busta. <laughs> no, no one's going to perform Busta. Busta like, you like, know, yeah. like yeah, no, I feel that, yo. You have a Nas at the top of your list, so like we, we good. I, I got no beef. <laughs> <You're good? laughs> I got no beef. Bro. Oh, you know, yo, and other highly slept on lyricists and rappers, Damian Marley. Mm. Bro, you talking bro. about that that Nas Damian Marley album? Not just the Nas, like Sony Hill, like just, even like this like last you, watch, bro. Those when you listen to Damian Marley as a rapper, and you just like as a, as a hip hop fan, it's like, how don't we give this man more credit mm. in the industry? Yo, and when you bring this up, it just has me thinking, like, hip-hop can never die because even if hip-hop as we know it, the genre that we credit all these artists to, dies, 
every other genre that's still alive will have elements because we see it in yeah. in electro EDM, you name it. Like everything, they're taking elements of hip hop to make their genre. Absolutely. Yeah. So like yeah. Who who are in your top five? Kendrick, not for sure. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, Nas, J, Big, Lil Wayne, and I'll probably put Andre in that last spot. Lil Wayne, I I feel like for me, and maybe if I try to be more objective, I probably would put Lil Wayne lower and or not enough five. I just feel like for me as a rapper, and like where I'm get where I where what I strive to be and what what inspired me so much is definitely Lil Wayne. It's like that's There's fair. nobody who's doing music right now who, you know what I mean, who doesn't know why Lil Wayne is one of the greatest. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I feel like that's where it's at. It's like, if you're talking to someone who only knows golden age hip hop and you're trying to like tell them like Lil Wayne's a top five artist, they're yeah. not trying to hear that, right? Like, But the thing about Lil Wayne is, and the, the sign of his greatness is that it does not matter how many whack albums he puts out. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, he's still a goat. <laughs> still yo, a goat. and this is what I would say as a Lil Wayne fan. And I've, I've said this to you a lot. And I think that's why he's trying to get this done. Lil Wayne's mixtapes are way better than the albums. Yeah. We are fans of Lil Wayne because for of the mixtapes. Mix and it's like, for people who like, who would find, why is Lil Wayne so good? And they're trying to find out on an album. I just feel bad because it's like, I can't, you know what I mean? I can't go and play you the upgrade you freestyle. You know what I mean? I but, can't, play, you know what I mean? I can't like, there's so many, like, there's just so many moments that you had to have been there on in the mixtape run to see right. like, this guy is the GOAT. Like, so what do you think about the come up in hip hop is really the golden period for your career, and then you almost like hit a level and the plateau or fall off. How, like, like so that's what you're saying is hip hop is. I'm just it's saying this until it gets to the point where it's not that anymore. I'm just saying it seems like everyone's first three albums will be the hardest. Their mixtapes are going to be the hardest, you yeah. know. And it's not that their craft is the most polished at that point. It's not that they're not going to get better. Yeah. As a rapper or as an artist. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't I see what you're saying, but I mean like that's kind of the same in every genre though. Like, like there isn't a you know what I mean? I'm I'm sure even Taylor Swift fans would tell you they love all her new albums, but those like first couple albums that had all those songs. Like, different. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> those are those are the ones. Like I, right now, like she she had to re-record because the label like took all her publishing or something. Okay. She re-recorded all those albums and re-released them on Spotify and now it says like Taylor's version. Right. And she tells her fans, like, you, if you listen to the old ones, it's the label getting money. But yeah. If you listen to the new ones, like, I'm getting paid. It's very getting paid. And it's like those things, like, she re released albums that came out 10 years ago and they all, like, were number one. They all charged it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. again, it's because she has a super loyal fan base. But I just think all, at the same time, it's because, like, the fans love those songs so much, those first albums so much. It's like, oh, you're going to sing those songs again? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, can't, I can't think of anybody who. You know, Jay-Z's not going to drop a classic album in his 50s. I mean, who am I saying? Maybe he could. But, like, oh. but you know what the, I mean? The, the one person is Ashley Busta. Ah, did Busta's you hear Busta's last, last album? It was his with, best project. With Kendrick on it? Yeah. I, like or maybe it was just like, it was just too long for me. It was just too much. The album? Yeah, the album. It was just too... That album had some bangers. It, yo, I'm, I'm, some maybe bangers. I'm hating. Maybe I'm hating. I need to go back to that. But it just And it had like, a concept. In terms of like a, in terms of a complete piece of work, I I think it was Buss's best project. Mm. I'm not saying that his best track, to me, give me some more is his best track. You know, but in terms of a project, I think that was his best track. From start to finish, you could listen to it. It flows really nice. I don't know. And it took him like 10 years to f produce this album, too. Right, you know? it would be like, Dr. Dre. Yeah. It's like, yeah, again, sonically, yeah, sonically, it's a great album. Yeah, I think... Again, you have a solid top five. So I'm not I'm not even gonna knock you. The only my only chink in there is Kendrick. And you know what? I just feel like for me it it is just on it, it definitely comes down to like the criteria for what makes a great lyricist is definitely like storytelling is high on there, but I think right. like impressing me with every half a bar is higher on there, you know? And so like I love I love to listen to fucking Action Bronson because right. it's like or just be rapping about food and like prostitutes. You know, it's not content, but it's like he's from Queens. You know, he's setting it up with that flow where it's like there's a punchline yeah. every every four bars. I never listened to it, and I'm like, oh, that was a great song. But I'm like, yo, he just rapped his ass off. Okay. I'm just looking at Kendrick. 
it's not like he, this guy had to go and fight for his respect. He didn't come up in a, he came up with a draft class. One of the hardest I've seen. We haven't seen something since that. It's true. You know? Like, it's, no one's knocking me, Kendrick. No one's knocking Kendrick. Kendrick. But like, would you say like, if like again, we're, we're, we're generalizing here, but would you say if we, if we picked five hip hop heads at random, all five of them would have Kendrick in their top five list? No, bro. If we pick five hip hop heads at random, they're, they might choose one person off my list. I don't know. I think Nas is going to be on everybody's it's list. It's the one. Bro. Eminem will probably be on everyone's list. Eminem might be on a lot of people's list, right? But I'll take, in terms of, and it's not lyrical ability, but relatability and storytelling. Like, Eminem could tell a story, but it's just not with the most relatable. I'll take it's true. Andre 3000 over M, personally. That's fair. The thing is, I think, the thing with Andre is, like, Andre is probably top three. For rap, he should be. Ever. He should But be. it's like, he never put out, like, a solo thing. You know what I mean? And all his best, Didn't all his to. best verses are songs he did with other. And again, I, but I feel like why at large he's not unanimously the champion is because he didn't, everybody else that makes these lists had a solo career. You know what I, I mean? I think they took Elcast to the table and they said, you guys are going to be the next up, but you got to sell your soul. And Andre <laughs> said, nah. <laughs> He's like, give that to the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> But yeah, no, like, I mean, Outcast of Legends, right? Like, even from the South, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Nah, yeah, no, that, that's a fire list. And to be honest, I guess I wouldn't replace anyone because I do understand, like, if, if storytelling is one of the high criteria on that list, then I get it. I get why Kenny is there. I don't know. I just, I just know, like, sometimes I feel like, is it because we live in this era right now and Kendrick Lamar is one of the hot rappers? Like, I guess this is what I'm saying. 20 years from now, 100 years from now, Eminem is going to be the GOAT. Like, you know, we're still going to be a GOAT. Like, one mm-hmm. of the people where you didn't need to be alive when he was alive to hear or, like, read what those raps mm-hmm. were saying to be like, oh, this guy's one of the greats, you know? Are we going to say that about Kendrick? I think so, bro. I really, I... <clears throat> I rest my case. Like, that's, you I, know... We I, I, I talked about To Pimp a Butterfly earlier, and now you said it. I was like, he literally encapsulated a time period in history but that, in the, his mu- album. the music is past there. Come on. But his music, music, <laughs> the music, music, Butterfly, is, music is our history. You understand? Like yeah, there was a, right. there's a massive part of it where like it traces back. The Ashantis are going to war. They're, they're singing a song. They're chanting. Mm. You sing that song after. Maybe this woman starts crying. She lost her husband. This person starts celebrating because they won the war. That, that's your history when you hear that song. Negro spirituals. Surviving things that we should never have to go through. Finding our way through freedom, through our music. You know what I mean? That's crazy. But we, like, we put our own history and survival into our music. Ella Fitzgerald's Stranger Fruit. Or no, is that Billie Holiday? Billie Holiday, Stranger mm-hmm. Fruit. You know? N.W.A. You know, so for Kendrick to come and put Two Pimp a Butterfly, I'm and just, it brings up Trevon Martin all over again. No one did that for George Floyd. Yo, I'm just saying. George Floyd didn't get it. I'm just saying, like, the sentiment was good, but the music was not good. Like, just rating it off the music. I, there's not five the songs is, on that album that I'm bumping on a, on a regular basis. There's not five songs on that album that regular there was people a time, on a regular There was basis. a time where I was playing that album more than I am now. I don't know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, share it with Kendrick, bro. I can tell you where I was the first time I heard that album, bro. It's it's all right. It's a fire track. Uh, Immortal Man, Fire. Yeah. You. There's there's it's it's like it's one of those albums where it's it's good, but it's like you gotta you have to listen to the album as an album to appreciate it. Yes, it's not absolutely. like you know what I mean you can't. And that's what I'm saying. It's like you can't put any of those songs into like a pop in playlist or even like a lo fi hip hop playlist. And it's like, you're just going to stick out. I'm like, what the fuck is this? But that is now saying that the way that we consume music affects the way our appreciation of the art. Okay. Spotify wasn't this this, album came out in 2015. I don't know if I was listening to shit on Spotify then. But all I know is wherever wherever I was listening to music, I just remember Drake dropped, if you're reading this too late that year, Energy, Six God. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all, like, that was the, that, yeah. that album was the summer. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then Kenny drops this, like, left field. You know what I mean? Like, bros rapping in different. I'm just like, what is this? I'm like, I want it. You I don't know. Bars? Like, for me, I'm like, I'm listening to energy before this. So I'm like, what is all this, like, and that's, that's drumming fair, and bro. talking this, shit? <laughs> like, that's fair. But this man, like, I can't tell him how to art, you yeah, know? Yeah, but what true. he put out there, I did listen to. 
And you felt it. And I felt it and I appreciated it, you know? You know what? I definitely be, I definitely have an agenda and I'm, I'm always just trying to tell people that album is whack. <laughs> and I'm trying to convince them that the album is whack. He's going to put out it to Pimper Butterfly too. <laughs> like, <laughs> just for you. But like, yo, like, you know what? I've, I've heard it back from other people now more than a couple of times where they're like, I, I enjoyed that album, even though I'm, made it, I'm making it very clear why it was not an enjoyable album. And they're agreeing, but again, it's, it's the art. And that's ultimately, it's not good art if we don't have varying opinions on it. You know what I mean? If everybody looks at it and says, that's what it is, then it's not art. It's a like fucking chair. Like, it's not, not <laughs> you know, like it, it's, it has to give everyone different opinions. So fair enough. To each his own, to each his own. Um, but yeah, me, third verse. This has been, this has been a great episode. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching Getting to the Bag. Season four, episode. I don't want to say. I'm not sure what this is, but yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Come check out Solid Studios. Dope setup, man. I appreciate your time. Nice one. All right. Well, I think that was the camera literally telling me we're out of time. I think so. <laughs> like that worked out.